What's up, you guys? James Strickland here. Welcome to week 73 on my road to 700 pounds on bench press. This week was very, very exciting. Like I said, pretty much every week going forward until the meet on April 25th is going to be pretty much exciting. We're getting heavier, feeling great, body weight staying really, really uh, level, and just overall some good things happening in life outside of lifting. Uh, so gearing up for the animal cage, that's going to be here in a couple weeks. So I'm definitely excited about that. So kind of keeping my mind uh, off of the meat and allowing me to kind of progress uh, a little bit slower and methodically uh, a little bit better than I had the last few training cycles. And it was more or less uh, kind of right to the meat kind of mindset. And I like to kind of slip into that just a little bit. But uh, before I go any further, I want to welcome you guys to the channel. If you guys are new, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit notifications, and uh, I will get you guys a video every week on my road to 700 pounds on bench press and beyond. And the, to those who are uh, subscribers for a long time or subscribers for the last week or so, welcome back. I really appreciate you guys uh, you know, sticking around on my journey. Uh, I know it's not uh, fly by night. It's not going to be one of those quick, uh, you know, dream about it and have it tomorrow type goals. And that is the way I like it. Uh, that's why I'm bringing you guys this video series is just to show you guys uh, that, you know, anything that you really want in life, it's going to take some work and anything worthwhile having is going to take some time and it's going to take that effort. And this is my uh, video log, if you will, of telling you guys kind of how I feel in training, what I'm doing in training. Uh, I don't have all the secrets and I don't claim to have all the secrets, but I definitely want you guys to see uh, a real lifter uh, going through, you know, real stuff and just seeing how I deal with it. Not that I'm definitely dealing with it in a perfect way, but if I can have any expertise that I bring to the table for you guys, I want to put it out there. And not to mention, you know, I, I started doing these videos a long time ago because I wanted to look back on it when I'm done lifting, when I have my kids or when they're older, uh, you know, when I'm an old guy and I want to look back and just see kind of reminisce of the, of the older days when I was lifting or when I was doing certain things or chasing world records, just to know, you know, like almost like a video diary. So that's kind of what I did in the beginning. And now I've got you guys following me along, which really inspires me to keep pushing on and to give you guys more content and give you guys more information. Uh, so it's a win-win, but, um, you know, welcome to week 73. Uh, this week, uh, what we have on tap is 605 pounds for a triple. Uh, I work with Josh Bryant. He's my coach, Jailhouse Strong. He coaches a lot of great lifters. I'm not going to even go through the list because I'm sure I'll miss a few. And I, I'm friends with all of them. And I don't want to really mess anybody up that way. But um, so the way we pick our uh, numbers, and I'm actually going to get into this a little bit further later on uh, in the video. But um, last week was 600 for a triple. Went off without a hitch. Felt great gave me a chance to really feel what 600 pounds felt like in my hands because I haven't put it, haven't been so over 600 in about six months. And that's a little strange after, you know, benching uh, so many times in the 600s for meets and in training and to back off and to be able to go a sub-maximal load for reps and building that pyramid up uh, until today, basically, or until last week. Um, a lot of people will ask me in my training, how come you're not always trying to bench 675 pounds or, or more? Because that's not how I train. That's not how I advocate training. Um, I'm sure you could do that a little bit and get some progress. But when you're at this level, handling that type of weight every single week for 12, 13, 14, 15 weeks uh, is, can be uh, detrimental to your, uh, your progress. Uh, and it definitely can hurt you. And if you get hurt, it sets you back even further. But uh, this week was not meant to be a super heavy um, progress week. We're not, you're not, not trying to go up 10 pounds, 15 pounds, still trying to keep the triples intact. Uh, now, 600 for three is a PR match. Uh, so that's the heaviest I've ever gone for a triple. Uh, I have done 630 for a double um, about two training cycles ago leading up to a successful meet. Um, but when I start getting to the triples, uh, you know, that high, um, at some point they're going to fall off and it doesn't mean that there's not a bigger bench down the road because, um, or that there's not a bigger bench down the road because of a triple not being a PR in a certain training cycle or a double not being a PR in a training cycle, uh, certainly doesn't mean you have to hit your PR single in order to hit it in a meet. Um, so with all that, you know, keeping all that in mind, the training weeks going forward, uh, are definitely, uh, sometimes hit and miss, but they're, they're calculated. I work very well with my coach. 
And so this week, uh, we were going to just go up about five pounds and do uh, 605 for a triple. That gives me a little bit more time in the 600s to feel that weight a little bit more uh, before going too much further. Uh, because in the past, we have gone 600 for a triple and then gone straight to 620 for a double, 630 for a double, uh, and then 660, 670. And I think, well, I know from previous experience on the previous training cycles, it worked for the first one uh, where I went 675 in training and then did a successful 672 in a meet and went just almost locking out 702 uh, for an all-time world record in the 308 weight class. But that was like two years ago in February. And that progress I could not duplicate for the next couple training cycles for some reason or another. Uh, doesn't mean that it's not working or you know it's it couldn't work but that particular time in my training it didn't work. So I've tried to duplicate it one more time and it didn't work that last time. So this time around we have an additional few weeks of training that we've added into the meat prep that will allow me to progress into the upper 600s a little bit slower um, allowing me to have a couple of bad days and not really be behind, uh, which is nice because you're not going to have a perfect training week every week. I've had some darn good training weeks up to this point. I think there's only been maybe two or three that I can really uh, pick out in the last you know eight to ten weeks where I was, or actually twelve weeks where I was like, man, that that day just sucked. I want to redo on that, and I came back stronger, or I came back and I hit the weight that I missed the week before and it was fine. Uh, so keeping that in mind, I am open for there to be bad days and uh, good days and things like that going forward. I definitely, um, I like to have good days like everybody, but I kind of like to have bad days because then I don't feel, it's almost kind of like a, a superstitious deal where you have 10 bad days in a row and you know you're bound to have a good day. Or if you have 10 good days in a row, you know a bad day is coming. Now, it's not really the way things work, but sometimes your mind can play tricks on you. So sometimes it's nice to have an up day, a down day, just so you know you're staying balanced. Gives you a little bit more hunger and drive, especially if you miss something, you can come back and get it. But uh, let me not ramble on too much about that because uh, I'll jump into that just a little bit later. But let me go ahead and jump into day one and day two. I had two, two days this week. I did not do a squat or a deadlift day this week just to give myself a little extra rest. Um, not to mention, I'm already happy with those numbers. Uh, I do want to do some squat work, deadlift work, and bench work. Uh, in the cage or, or in the Arnold arena of time. So I feel like my deadlift is already at 800 for a, a couple of reps. Uh, my squat is definitely at 700 for a couple of reps. And we obviously see my bench at 600 for more than one, more than two reps. So I feel like I'm ready to go and I don't need to progress much further with those lifts unless I'm just kind of bored. This week didn't really have a lot of time, so it was perfect. I didn't do a squat day, so I have my day one uh, heavy bench day, my day two uh, shoulder and upper accessory day. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right. Starting off here, just showing you my last couple of warm-up sets. 405. Want to see this thing fly through the roof. Just absolutely phenomenal. I like that. I like it. It felt great. Um, last uh, couple warm-ups here, 495. Over here, uh, at Woodland Strength and Conditioning. Uh, I could not get uh, a training partner for the day. It was just kind of an off day for me. Uh, couldn't align the schedules. Um, that just happens sometimes, uh, especially when I have a, a different split than normal. It's kind of hard to plan when I'm going to be going into the gym. So it's hard for me to get a training partner to be there all the time, uh, which it happens. Um, so I've got here 605 for two, and I'll tell you what happened. Uh, and obviously you'll see it here in the lift. I don't have a lift off. Uh, I don't need a spot necessarily um, because I have the safety pins and people ask me that all the time. I assure you, uh, I have dropped the bar not very many times, but when I do, uh, before I even load 135, I make sure the bar stops before it hits my neck. So if it uh, hits my chest, it'll just roll down. Typically, I'll just uh, collapse underneath it. I'm fine. So I assure you, safe. One rep, fine, fast. Two, a little bit out of the groove there. Uh, shoulder was bothering me a little bit and decided to be smart about it and just shut it down. Uh, third, I could have squeaked out a third. It wouldn't have been smart. 
Now, here's what I'm doing here. Uh, I knew that doing multiple reps without a lift off is just kind of rough. Uh, a little bit of a, uh, an, um, a different approach here. Uh, I didn't actually know that I had people in the gym that were this close to me. I thought they were overdoing a class and not able to lift off for me. I didn't even realize who was in the gym. So doing this lift, you see these guys standing behind me. I didn't even know they were in the gym that close enough. Um, so I would have asked them for a lift off had I seen that. But here's 615 self lift off. Feeling good. Hit the pin there, uh, which is one of the bad things about a self lift off. But I'm actually happy with that. I was going for a double. Uh, obviously hitting that pin threw me off a little bit. So I went ahead and took it for a ride on the third here. Got a little bit of a sticking point there, but that's just, I think, mostly fatigue. Uh, so overall, pretty happy with that. Uh, moving on to 515 for uh, three sets of three speed bench. Um, you know, so talking a little bit about the 600 to five, you know, 605 for three would definitely be a PR. With a self lift off, that's a tall order. Uh, there's a lot of energy used on a self lift off, so I'm happy with that. Even though it's not the numbers that I wanted to hit, um, I've got some banded bench here. This is working on that sticking point you guys saw earlier. This is a direct uh, exercise for that. So working against those bands, it's 455 on the first one with 100 pounds of uh, band tension. This is 125 of band tension. Just added a blue band there. And this is really working. I've got to explode off the chest and I cannot slow down at all during this lift or else it's going to come back down on me. And that helps blast the sticking point. This is another great exercise. This is an isometric press. And I put this in literally, it was not in the programming today, but because I know where that sticking point is, um, I'm holding these for eight to 10 seconds or as long as I can bear it with 100% force. I mean, I am trying to rip this squat rack out of the ground. Uh, this is a second set of this. I wanted to set the camera up behind me so you guys see how I set up. I literally set up at least as much identical to a regular bench press as I possibly can. It's a little hard because the bar's in the way and things like that, but I normally just put the bar down there below it, let, let it set up. I get my scapula retracted and get tight. Then I get the bar placed right where I want it. And then I put it on the pins and I blast it. And you'll see it's hard to tell because obviously I'm not moving anything. But you can tell that I'm putting so much force into that bar uh, that my body is, is shaking and trembling because I'm putting so much force into it. What that does is it forces your muscles to work harder than they normally would if you had a barbell with weights on it. And that will help blast a sticking point. Um, it, will, uh, it will, what you wanna do is set it up maybe an inch or so below where you perceive that sticking point or where that slowing uh, of the bar is. And that will help you get stronger with that area. Uh, showed you guys there the 150s, uh, back to the 150s for the, or the um, uh, face down incline chest supported rows. A few sets of that, just showing one set. Uh, I've got a different setup here with the chain flies. I don't have the big uh, tumbe uh, the tugboat chain at this gym, but I went as close as I could possibly get to uh, the weight and uh, going to work on these flies. Uh, definitely added a few more sets of pec work in here. I felt like my pecs could handle a little bit more today. Uh, they were a little fatigued, obviously, uh, with a couple extra sets of bench that I threw in uh, that were not on the program and the, uh, the speed bench and the, um, uh, the band work. So I'm definitely taxed by this point of the workout. This is probably about three hours later. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of extra people in here working out. This is several hours later. <laughs> um, so I've got some tricep uh, rope here. And this is uh, going off of an RPE scale, kind of just making the 15 rep max, working up to as many as I can get for, or as much weight as I can do for 15 reps with a contraction at the bottom. Uh, ended up just ended up uh, doing the full set uh, here, um, the full stack here towards the end. Uh, was pretty taxed by this point. Uh, couldn't get the greatest of form uh, or the contraction at the bottom. So I really didn't count this set, but I wanted to show you guys just kind of where my fatigue level is at the end of the workout. Uh, plus I'm not, um, you know, I'm still got some energy. I definitely still want to work and want to make things happen. Um, you know, when it, when it comes down to the last uh, set of the day, there's, you know, I see a lot of you guys see me kind of in full force, hundred uh, percent. That's kind of what it looks like when I'm fatiguing out. So day two here, starting off with 310 pounds on the rear delt um, flies. 
kind of hitting those rear delts pretty good. They feel very, very strong. Um, you know, the first time I did this 300 pound weight, it was definitely very, very taxing on the rear delts. Uh, by set four, this definitely does feel a lot heavier or a lot more, uh, it's a lot harder because <laughs> the fatigue is building up, but that's only the first exercise of the day. Moving on, I'm supposed to do two sets of eight on 455 on the close grip uh, decline bench press. Definitely having a spot there. I shut it down after five. It just didn't feel right. My shoulders felt a little off, uh, so I, I didn't want to hurt anything. Uh, so I shut those down for the day. Went on to do my back work, uh, some chest supported uh, seal rows here. And this is um, 405, last couple last uh, couple of sets here at the last part. And uh, 405 there for five, 430 here for another set of five. This one was definitely more taxing, um, but wanted to get as best a form as I possibly could, really resetting on the bar each time and really squeezing the last one here you'll see not quite all the way up, but that will pretty much do it for those. Moving on, some shoulder exercises here. This is my front raises and side raise superset. I didn't do the rear delt uh, because I felt like I really, really hit those good earlier in the day with those, uh, the rear delt flies. Uh, so no need to hit them with the dumbbells again. But these are a great shoulder builder, shoulder uh, mobility work, uh, and definitely keep your shoulders healthy. There's no reason to go super heavy on those. Uh, this is a great exercise as you probably have seen me do before. The dumbbell fully extended pullover, and uh, this is 60 pounds. And this really stretches out uh, the lower pecs, the upper pecs, uh, just kind of getting those shoulders open. Uh, this is also a good test for me if my rotators are bothering me or not because it'll kind of click and it'll bother me just a little bit. No, no pain there or anything crazy. Um, moving on, T3 raises, another shoulder exercise. This is really, really good for shoulder health and really just working on getting those shoulders opened up. Uh, it's really tough sometimes to stay mobile when you have a lot of mass uh, in your upper extremities. Uh, so this really helps to keep those um, shoulders open, the rotators um, flowing, and uh, I really feel good after I do those. Got some kneeling landmines here. This is two plates on the bar, so I, you know, roughly 125, 30 you know, each one. By this time, I'm pretty taxed out. This is the end of the week, so my shoulders are tired, uh, but really just working on exploding and getting those, um, getting those up and over uh, really, really fast. Overall though, feeling very, very good. Um, it is going to be normal to feel some fatigue by the end of the week, uh, so I'm definitely okay with that. Uh, it's a little bit more back here on lats. Um, I did some wide grip before this, and this is a little bit more of a neutral grip, but I really feel like this gets a good stretch in the lats, get those working. Uh, this is the full stack at 250. And then last exercise of the day and last exercise of the week is uh, a big giant set of uh, 12 sets of 10. And I, I believe I switched that and actually did 10 sets of 12 just to, I was cutting short for time. And uh, this is the tricep uh, bar. Uh, I'm using the V bar just to give a little extra um, comfort on the elbows. Sometimes when I do the rope or the straight bar, it kind of messes with the elbows a little bit, especially this kind of weight. But uh, happy with these, uh, fatiguing to say the least, um, but feeling very, very good and excited about everything, how everything is moving. Um, looking forward to you know, getting these going for the next couple weeks uh, and really moving on. But that is it for the video recap uh, of the training itself. Uh, so. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into uh, the Q&A uh, the, the section of the video because I want to touch on uh, a little bit of what I was talking about earlier with uh, one of the questions that I have, and so they tie right in together. So let's go ahead and jump right into the, uh, the Q&A section. Uh, so the first one is from Lanretto and right here on YouTube, and he asks, how do you determine reps and set schemes for accessories in different phases of programming, hypotrophy, strength, and peak? So 
I definitely mentioned that I work with Josh Bryant. He is my coach. He's been my coach for, uh, let's see, about two and a half, three years now. And um, worked with him before hitting a 600-pound bench officially. And uh, definitely worked very well, very well with him. Uh, so when it comes down to it, honestly, uh, I rely very, very heavily on his knowledge and his programming to give me uh, what I need at any given point in time in my training. So when it comes to how do I determine my reps and sets and things like that, I solely rely on Josh. And I say, hey, you know, this is what we have this week. This is what the goal is, you know, in eight weeks or, uh, you know, we're in off season hypotrophy phase or we're in our strength phase or right now, particularly we're in strength, uh, we're in peak phase. Uh, he will actually do the program every week. Now, one thing that I think is very, very uh, good in our relationship is that he knows that my experience as a lifter, uh, also being a coach, also being very much n a non-ego lifter and very smart approach uh, to how my training is and how my body feels. And if I need to go a little bit more or a little bit less, uh, he trusts the fact that I am able to trim things out a little bit or add some stuff in like the isometric presses this week or maybe a double here and there that's not maxing out. Uh, obviously, you know, let's say for example, uh, today or uh, this week was 605 for uh, a triple that didn't happen. Uh, now, had I gone, you know what, man, I feel like that sucked. I really could get 630 right now or 650 right now and go ahead and just trying to hit a 650 or 660 bench, you know, self lift off for a PR. Now, that would be a very dumb move because all it's doing is stroking my ego. I don't do things like that. Now, I am willing to take uh, a middle ground and actually more of a conservative middle ground sometimes when I feel like if the programming calls for 565 and that week is just a breakout week and we've kind of been able to uh, build up a great base and we go 575 and then 585 and it happens, then I know that I've kind of accelerated the training a little bit, but that at some point it's going to come back just a little bit. So we're not going to be able to just keep going. We're not going to skip weeks, if you will. So uh, in other words, we're not going to go 605 for three this week, miss 605 for three, and then go 630 for two next week. It's just, that's too much. Um, my body's still trying to adapt to some of the fatigue. We're still stripping off some of the extra volume, and we still got some volume in, this, in the programming. So you're not going to see me going and doing a 675 bench next week because the volume that we have is way too high to allow me to be able to peak right now. That's the whole point of peaking. Uh, but back to the initial question, um, when it comes to how do you in general determine reps for your own programming, which I think might apply here, um, if you don't have a coach or you don't have a program that you're following, uh, I tend to follow more of a linear progression, so maximal loads, um, and that's how I build up my training. So I've talked about it before, but I'll touch on it again, is I look at my training uh, in terms of blocks. So like the hypotrophy phase, obviously, is going to be higher reps, lower weight, and you're going to build up the base. And then you'll get to a point where, you know, if you want to look at definitions, you know, X number of reps equals hypotrophy, and X number of reps equals strength, and X number of reps equals peaking, then you can follow that that pyramid on up. But when it comes to uh, accessories, it really depends on what your weaknesses and your strengths are. Uh, so you want to work your weakness pretty much all the time. You want to bang that weakness until it makes it, you know, until it becomes a strength. Uh, so I would put more emphasis on your weak uh, areas. If your back is weak, then do more back. Um, don't sit there and work on your strengths all the time uh, and feel good about your training because you're able to hit certain reps and whatever. Uh, you know, if you're for example, if you're bad at deadlift, then deadlift more. Uh, deadlift with better form. Do deadlift accessories for your hamstrings, for your quads, for your legs. Um, you know, work the weaknesses. Uh, but in terms of um, accessory, let's say reps and schemes, you know, a good kind of a happy medium to start with is three sets of eight, three sets of ten. Uh, you know, if it's something that you can do 15 reps of and it's not a big burnout, uh, you know, maybe do three, four sets of 15. Uh, and then kind of add a rep or two every so often. Uh, and then if it starts getting up to where you're doing so many reps, it's just kind of cardio, then that's when you can add some weight and you strip it back down and keep it in that rep range that you're happy with. Uh, but really, it's it's so across the board. 
um, when it comes to your own training and everybody's got a different approach, it's hard to give you kind of a, a you know, a set answer or a, a concrete answer of what the exact accessory rep scheme should be or what your main rep scheme should be. Um, but if you have questions about individual programming, uh, definitely maybe shoot me an email, swimhack at gmail.com, and I can kind of look or see what you're doing and maybe give you an, an, an individual answer to help you out. But uh, thanks, Landretto, for that question right here on YouTube. Second one is over uh, from over on uh, uh, Instagram, and it's Tony9008, double on underscore, <laughs> and he asked, uh, why do you put plates underneath your feet? So specifically referring to the last few weeks when I've been on the Rogue uh, Thompson Fat Pad setup at Legacy Barbell. Not this week. You didn't see plates under my feet this week. But when I was on the Rogue Thompson Fat Pad, um, that is about three inches taller than a competition bench or a standard you know, rack bench. And so in order to facilitate where my feet and my leg placement would normally be, um, I use plates so that my feet aren't actually further or, or lower down than they would be on a competition bench. So if I'm if my butt is higher, then my my legs are actually at a different angle, and so it it does uh, throw me off a little bit as far as leg drive. I don't want to get used to having that lower angle because when I am on a competition bench. Uh, it can be, it throws you off a little bit. In fact, this week, um, that's not something that I mentioned earlier, but I did feel a little bit less support uh, on a regular bench. Um, now, the shoulders felt great, uh, so I'm okay not necessarily going back and forth, uh, you know, between a fat pad or not, but um, I definitely want to make sure that I'm training and, and emphasizing as we get further into meat prep, 100% uh, on a competition bench, unless there's some major problem. Uh, so the plates under my feet are actually just improving my leverage when I have a disadvantage because of the, the height of the bench. Uh, if your bench is a normal bench height and you can reach the ground just fine and it's not throwing your legs off, then don't use plates. Uh, it's one more thing to set up. But that's kind of a short and easy question uh, there. There's nothing scientific behind it. It's just a matter of uh, it feels uh, better uh, on my legs. Now, I have pretty long legs. I can definitely reach the ground if I was six inches higher, but it does throw off leg drive, and it's it's a different angle. It's a different feel, um, and I don't want to get used to that, uh, especially going into meat prep. But um, that's it for the Q&A. Uh, Q can't ever say that right. The Q&A section of the video. I really do appreciate you guys uh, submitting those. Um, I will hit those up uh, you know, from time to time, I'll do, you know, maybe a, my favorite section or different things, but uh, definitely want to keep you guys in the loop and try to keep, you know, get you guys question and answers if I know them. If I don't, I'll ask around and get some information for you so I can relay it to you. But uh, if you guys want to submit a question, definitely comment below. You can submit one via email, swimhack at gmail.com, and that goes with any question or if you want to ask something privately and you don't want to necessarily blast you out uh, on, on YouTube, then just let me know, you know, if you have a question about something. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. If you guys aren't over there already following me, definitely check me out uh, at SwimHack. Uh, put a lot of good stuff over there, a lot of daily photos, uh, some things that are in the personal life that aren't necessarily part of the YouTube training recap. So you guys, uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing and you uh, you know want to see me as an outside of a, a, you know outside the gym, then you can check me out over there. Uh, put some family photos and things like that. Uh, some of my hobbies and, you know, different things that I'm involved in. But um, pretty short and sweet for this week. Um, I really do uh, appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. Like I said earlier, uh, you know, if you guys are interested in uh, getting videos like this every week and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, definitely like it if you like this video. Share it with your friends. Um, and you know, I'll bring you guys a video probably once every eight to 10 days. I'm going to hit this video out and then I've got, uh, one more training day before the, um, the animal cage. And so I'm going to do kind of a different, um, um, style video. I'm guessing for that week, it probably won't be the same type of training week. I'm going to try to keep it as, as, as constant as I can, but sometimes when there's traveling, I'm going to be doing some spring break traveling as well. 
Uh, I'm pretty much just going to have to take a deload that week and not really train at all, which is fine uh, because we're this far out from me. We have we have some room to play with a little bit, but there are some numbers that I definitely want to hit some milestones. Um, not quite at the point where I have to be hitting those soon, uh, but I've got maybe four weeks before I need to hit my next milestone to feel better about training. Uh, you know, if I don't, let's say, for example, I'd like to be hitting in the 630 range uh, for one or two within the next three weeks uh, so that I feel good about going to the 660 range in a few weeks from that. And then obviously peaking out towards 700, uh, very very, very close to the meet. Uh, so, you know, if we miss a few days here and there, or we miss, you know, a rep here or rep there, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we still need to be moving in a progressive direction uh, overall and with time. And I think we're doing that very well right now. A little bit lower key uh, approach, not so much pressure this particular training cycle. And I really, really like that. Um, but you know, stay tuned. Next week, I'm uh, going to bring you guys uh, on the agenda. We have 615 for a double. Um, we're going to see how we can make that move. We're going to make sure that that moves really, really good. Uh, and I think that would be a, a very much of a, a milestone that we can focus on and be excited about. But uh, that's it for this video this week. I uh, really do appreciate each and every one of you for, got, you know, for tuning in. And uh, I will see you guys next week on week 74. See you.